The Princess of Wales celebrates her 42nd birthday today. Many happy returns. And will likely be hoping to break what has been branded her birthday curse. Kate's special day has been overshadowed by other national or royal scandals since 2020. Last year, it was the release of Harry's book Spare. And the year before, it was the first coronavirus lockdown. To talk about the birthday girl and all things royal, I'm joined by the royal editor, Mr Robert Johnson. Robert, welcome to the new Independent Republic of Mike Graham in this brand new uh, setting that we've got. Very grand. You must Beautiful. pop in and see us. We've got some... Uh, I'm definitely going to pop in. We've got great. some beverages on the, on the table here for you, so, <laughs> so we're hoping that might bring you in. Um, happy day for, uh, for, for Kate and, uh, and a reasonably happy day compared to last year, I suppose, uh, for the royals. Well, there were no announcements, there were no books, and there were no scandals, so it's pretty good for a <laughs> uh, Kate birthday. I think um, if she, she was, it was quite a quiet day. She, you know, she would have celebrated with her family and her kids. So, I mean, in many ways, she's the star light of the, the royal family anyway, and I think that she doesn't really put her foot wrong. And there's all this um, claims from out the other side of the Atlantic that she's not very warm and that, and that she's, you know, she's steely and she's difficult. Fact is that Kate has been brilliant, I think, over the last year or so. And just uh, dignified silence as all this nonsense has come her way is uh, speaks volumes. So I mean, you know, she's. Uh, I'm sure the king is glad he's got her on a team. Yeah, I think so. Because there was a time, wasn't there? If you remember back to this time last year, that it looked as though the Harry and Meghan sort of um, part of the family was going to be a real problem. It was going to be a real nightmare. But actually, in the 12 months since, they've actually kind of faded into almost insignificance. And when we saw the Golden Globes, even the, 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 the sort of the cast of Suits making fun of Meghan, you kind of go, well, that's about as low as it gets, isn't it? Well, I think the sort of the train load of lies that were coming their way from, from the Sussexes has just been found out. I mean, the reality is, you know, most of the things that have been said have just been proven to be complete nonsense yeah. and are easily proven to be nonsense. And I think that is the problem that Harry and Meghan have got, is that everything they seem to say just sort of falls apart on, on closer examination. Yeah. It's almost as though I kind of take it back to that, you know, supposed high-speed car chase in New York, which was so blatantly Absolutely a right. load of old uh, bollocks, I'm just going to say it right now, that clearly <laughs> um, everybody just went, hang on a minute, maybe everything else they've said is similar. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I remember being in America just slightly after that happened. And, Amer and you know, you've been, you, you know, you lived in New York, you know, yeah. you New York, and uh, the idea of a high-speed... <laughs> race in, in New York was ludicrous. And 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 I think the TV networks in America, in America had the, the taxi driver on the, on the TV and he yeah. just sort of completely shut it down in flames. Right. And I think that just made people, particularly New Yorkers, which is at the hub of, you know, the, the sort of all the whole TV world really over there, um, just, just thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. And from that moment on, they'd just been seen as sort of, sort of figures of, of, almost figures of fun, really. Yeah. And you've and you've watched this this particular you know pantomime for many many years. Um, a lot of people said at the time, shouldn't William and Kate come out and say something? And they've actually been quite smart because they didn't really, and they didn't really dignify a lot of the accusations with with anything official, apart from when he said, you know, the royal family's not racist, which I think was the right thing to do. But they played a, a pretty decent uh, bat here, haven't they? I think so, and I think he was actually right to say this: the royal family's not racist. Mm as well when he did. But now to come out, um, as we've recently heard, you know, that it was supposed to be Prince Charles and, and Kate that are racist. I mean, I just don't see that. I don't recognise it. Yeah, OK, I'm a middle-aged, you know, white guy and, a, you know, I, was, I can be accused of uh, all sorts of things, institutional racism, I suppose, whatever he called the uh, unbiased, unbiased, unconscious bias whatever and all these is, things. Yeah. But I've covered this for 35 years. And, you know, the, the, the king in particular, you know, he's somebody that's worked... You know, hugely in communities and the Asian community and the and and, and inner cities, and he's done so much for um, for to in, for interfaith relations. It's ridiculous. It's just a ridiculous statement. And also, if you only have to watch Kate when she's out, you know, doing the her daily jo the job in the streets, and right. she's there's not a racist bone in her body. So I just think the whole thing has just been blown out of proportion, and it came from that appalling Oprah Winfrey interview. That, yeah. frankly, if you actually re-examine that interview. I mean, you know, I'm surprised it hasn't been sort of banned from being right. completely inaccurate. I mean, it really is appalling that it came out like that. And they should really, I think, Meghan and Harry, particularly Harry, should hang his head in shame for allowing it to carry on like yeah. that. Yeah. 
I think so. I think that was some, the, the, the final straw for an awful lot of people because they just couldn't quite believe that he particularly had allowed that situation to occur. But what happens next for them? I mean, um, you know, we've been hearing all day that things are not great for them right now in, in America. He's never going to run out of money. He's got that massive trust fund uh, that he was left by his mother. But, I mean, you know, they live a pretty extravagant life. They've got pretty expensive taste. You know, that house doesn't come cheap and presumably all those Cadillac Escalades don't, uh, don't come free. And private jets, they can borrow up to a point. But, you know, what will they do if they need to start making some proper money? Well, they're in America. And it's an expensive place when you're that sort of top of the... You know, you're trying to be mingle with the stars. Um, I think that, you know, I'll never be poor. He's, he's in, he had a, a massive mode of load of money that he inherited but the point of it is they live a very expensive life they've got their security system uh guys in place that's not cheap they you know they'd like to fly in private jets that's even if you're you know at some stage as you say their friends are going to run out in terms of loaning it out for nothing so mm. and they don't seem to be giving out an awful lot of money out of their charitable foundation so i don't know i think they're going to have to rethink what they're doing um i can't see them coming back here i can't see megan ever coming back here but i can't see harry wanting to really um be over here either i mean i was out today with a, someone quite close to the late queen and it was really upsetting to hear some of the stories about how upset she was about everything yeah. um at the time of this going on just before she passed away and that she was in quite a lot of pain and that she had she was suffering um physically from what was going on but it was a mental strain mm. you know the whole of this business that was going on and clearly upset her at the end of what was a great reign. So I think really, looking in a few years' time, if he doesn't do it now, Harry in particular should be thinking, I really let, I really let, he not only let my family down, but he let the Queen down. And I think yeah. that was something he would have, he, he's going to live to regret. No, I think so. Stories around today that the Queen may have been the one that kind of suggested to Prince Andrew that he make whatever payment he did make to Virginia Giffray. Um, Piers Morgan tonight spoke uh, to Jeffrey Epstein's only yeah. living relative, Mark Epstein, um, and he told Talk TV exclusively he believes the paedophile financier was actually murdered by a powerful contact with a vested interest to keep him quiet. Have a look at this. Well, first, the, the actual pathologist who did the autopsy uh, did not determine it was a suicide. They couldn't. They said it looked more like a homicide. But on the, death, on the initial death certificate, on cause of death, it said pending, meaning pending further investigation, which is proper. And then a few days later, you know, Bill Barr claims it was a suicide. And then the chief pathologist of New York, who did not see the body, claims it's a suicide. So the point, the question becomes, what investigating was done in a matter of days to make them come out with that determination? And it turns out that because it was called a suicide, there doesn't seem to have been an investigation. Because if you declare somebody died by suicide, there's really nothing to investigate. You know, the only questions about a suicide is how did they do it? Did they hang themselves? Did they shoot themselves? Did they jump out of a window? And that's the pretty obvious answer at the time of the death. So there's no investigation was done. The EMTs that went to the prison were never questioned. The hospital personnel were never questioned. We can't seem to find the medical records. We can't get the 911 call. If this was a suicide, why are all these things hidden? Well, it's a pretty good question. And, I mean, we may never know the answer to, to these um, suggestions that there was foul play or there was some jiggery-pokery, skullduggery, whatever you want to call it, uh, involved in, in Epstein's death. But I wonder as well whether, Robert, um, it sort of helps Andrew in a way if this focus of, of whether Epstein was killed and whether it was Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton or anybody in America, whether it was Bill Gates, you know, that kind of shoves it away from him, doesn't it? Well, to a degree, it changes the, the narrative. But, look, well, I remember when he first... It was the, the first um, reports of his death came out, there was a lot of talk about um, it being um, a possible murder. There was a lack of evidence. There was all sorts of things coming out at the time. Then it suddenly shut down. I think, as um, yeah. Jeffrey Epstein's brother has said there, when it was declared to be a suicide. Right. And there was no video... There was no video evidence. There was... It seems that... Um, there was reports that he was on suicide watch, but right. in a report that he did give to um, the, 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 um, the one of the, the, I think the psychotherapist that was watching him, um, said that he, why would I want to kill myself? I have a great life. And there was a sense that he was, with the money he had, 
he was going to fight very vigorously yeah. um, against this this latest claims that were against him. Because if you remember the first, I mean, I'm no way defending Jeffrey Epstein, but the first um, reason he went to prison was because he did a deal. He did a deal with the authorities so that uh, he would get a lesser charge. And then there was he was looking to fight the, the, the next time by saying, well, you can't do me on the same charge. And yeah. it was, there was a lot of wranglings going on there. So I, I think that, uh, he, you know, he, he, he doesn't appear to be someone um, that was going to give up the ghost. But the, at the same time, he was placed on suicide watch. And yeah. there must have been a reason a reason for that. But it's a fascinating interview and something that we haven't really, hasn't really been expanded upon um, since his death. No, exactly right. Just uh, on a happier note to finish up, the front page of The Sun, uh, we've just got hold of it coming out tomorrow. Uh, it talks about Kate standing by uh, one of the postmasters. She says, I want justice for us all. Um, postmaster backed by Princess Kate and her family uh, in his 10-year fight for justice is now demanding that every conviction is overturned. You can see it there. Um, so that's a sort of a nice belated birthday present for Kate. Well, look, it's an incredible story, as you were pointing out earlier yeah. in the... Uh, and you know, we all watched that with with interest. And the fact that Kate is getting behind um, the postmasters, I think that's probably quite a, a good move. Um, yeah. The reality is, as you say, there's so many more questions to be asked, so many more people involved. And um, hopefully, uh, hopefully, Mr. Bates will now get will accept his OBE now that he was offered. Yeah. Now that the, uh, the CB has been handed back. But you know, what I had what surprised me with that, that whole story. You know, Kate is great back in it was didn't um uh, the, the the ceo walk away not only with the cbe but like a four hundred thousand pound yeah, yeah. Uh, i mean gee, it's unbelievable the it whole really story is. Yeah. No, a very, ni yeah, a very nice amazing, pay, yeah. a very nice little uh, pay packet to go away with but also a couple of decent jobs that she got later on as well including yeah. running an nhs trust robert we've got to run great to talk to you thank you very much indeed robert Good johnson to see you, Mike. Uh, the so royal much. the royal editor the man to talk to when you need to know about the royals